Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the very, very early build of Hell Let Loose, the latest in Unreal Engine military themed running simulators. And of course, I'm joking to a certain extent. I mean, I'm not lying in that the majority of what you will be doing in this game right now is just running and running and running across open fields in a incredibly beautiful countryside that is highly realistic to the actual battlefields of World War II. This is actually modeled through satellite photos and I believe of location scouting as well to make this uh, battlefield look as real and as accurate as possible to the actual battle in World War II. And that's kind of cool when you're running through it. You're thinking, you know what? This feels very real. It looks very real. And it probably plays out somewhat realistically compared to the way that the actual battle could have played out. Now, because this is such an early build of the game, we don't yet have transport vehicles in game yet. So the start of the round involves I'm going to say about four to five minutes of running just to get to a location where you might be close enough to the enemy to get into a firefight. The weapons are realistic. The engagement distances are realistic. So a lot of the combat may end up just being pixel shooting at extreme distances. In fact, I was going through marking my kills in this footage and I'm thinking, you know what? Anybody watching this on YouTube isn't even going to be able to see what I'm shooting at because uh, it's just tiny little targets in the distance. People prone crawling through fields and I'm sort of like, is that a guy out there? Take the shot, run all the way up. Oh yeah, that was a guy. I killed him. And so that's what a lot of the combat is probably going to be like in this game. It is impressive for anyone who's played squad and enjoys that highly realistic military feel. This game feels like sort of a World War II version of squad, but if I'm being honest with better visuals, however, worse animations at the moment, the player animations, player movement, gun mechanics, they feel very clunky right now, not particularly enjoyable, um, just very slow and hard to react to people surprising you, which is kind of annoying. I don't know if that's done for a realism aspect, but um, yeah, at the moment, the player animations are not particularly impressive, but the overall world visuals are very impressive. Now, I do have some actual combat footage here, and hey, guess what? We're leading up to a kill. This is what your average life will look like while playing Hell Let Loose, and there's a guy. I found him, I shot him, and that was pretty much it. The fields are so open, and the map is so massive that chances are most of your engagements are gonna be flanking the enemy. Once you fire, the enemy will know where you are, and then they'll flank you or ambush you, which is exactly what happens here. I have some more combat, and I'm gonna show that, but I just kinda wanted to show the first life of this game in more of a realistic portrayal. So without question, this game falls into the military sim family. It's certainly gearing up to be one of the most realistic portrayals of a World War II battle game ever, in my opinion, and that's really cool, very impressive. But it is important to sort of distinguish it as more of a sim game because Sims are more about realistic portrayal, right? You want to play a sim to sort of simulate what that must have been like in real life. A flight sim is supposed to simulate realistic flying mechanics. A combat sim should simulate realistic combat mechanics. And they're doing so by creating a completely realistic looking world visually and creating all the weapons and mechanics uh, of the weapons that would have been portrayed in real life as well. And it's important to say that because gameplay can often suffer from sim mechanics. Battlefield is very far from a sim game. It's an arcade game, but they design it in a way to keep the combat moving quickly, to entertain the player, to keep them constantly engaged in fighting. And a sim game, if it's doing its job properly, especially for combat, uh, means you're not going to see anywhere near as much action in these types of games. They're going to be much more about position, moving with your team, orchestrating strategies, setting up rally points, and then the occasional pockets of combat and fighting. And I've really grown to appreciate the military sim game, but for me, I have to play in a specific manner to enjoy myself. I have to be playing with some friends, some people that are good about talking about stuff in between the combat because, uh, let's be honest, most of the time you play a sim game, you're not actually gonna be in the combat. So you need to be able to have some fun, entertaining conversations in between. And then when the combat breaks out, you can kind of focus on that and strategize a bit more. And that's how I generally get my enjoyment out of it. And it, it is fun. It, it, they feel more like adventure games in that sense where you're having an adventure with pockets of combat as opposed to just nonstop action in combat from start to finish. 
Now behind the sim mechanics, there are of course some gameplay mechanics. There's squad leaders, you can put down rally points. There's medics that can revive teammates. Uh, support players that can drop ammunition and supplies. So there are some basic sort of Battlefield-esque style mechanics in this game. The overhead map is broken up into a grid structure with capture points and areas of the map and stuff like that, but you still need rally points and positioning and all that kind of stuff to sort of establish a front line. And so there are some some gameplay mechanics and some interesting strategy mechanics in there. Uh, of course, this game is very early access, so half of the stuff isn't even implemented properly. There's issues with the voice comms and voice chat and stuff like that. Text takes up half the screen right now and vehicle transportation and logistics are not in the game at all. So I imagine the battles are playing out very differently from what the developers have intended for their final product. We see things like this again with games like Squad where the game launched without vehicles and so people just had to run halfway across the map at the start of the game. Then vehicles got implemented and people were able to actually rush points early in the round and get into combat right away. In fact, Squad doesn't even have helicopters yet which is intended uh, for the game and that'll change up the gameplay even further so if this map is designed around vehicles and logistics it is playing very differently right now from what the developers intend for their final game now at the moment if you want to play hell let loose you basically have to have been a backer of the game on the kickstarter um, it's still in extremely early access so only the people who initially backed the game are able to play it and check it out right now but i imagine it will be coming to steam early access in the near future um, i imagine it'll also cost money not be a free to play which is what most of these milsim games do um, and i think it's got a lot of potential i think it's got a future in it right now i won't say it's like the most fun game ever maybe if you can get together with a really good group of buddies but it's buggy it crashes you're going to disconnect so you're going to have slow performance issues all the kind of stuff you would expect in an extremely early access game but i am really happy to see that this game is just being made i'm a sucker for really good looking games uh, visually speaking that's what kind of draws me into certain titles initially as i'm like oh that looks really cool once you get in then it's sort of the gameplay or the camaraderie that will keep me there it's hard to talk about hell let loose though without also mentioning postscriptum uh postscriptum i believe started out as a mod for squad also in the unreal engine and then i believe it's its own standalone game right now that focuses on realistic world war ii combat the visuals in my opinion aren't quite as good as uh this game and i haven't played it so i can't really be one to compare the two titles against each other and tell you which one's better but it is something worth mentioning if you're interested in getting into the realistic world war ii genre i would also say check out postscriptum see if that's something that might appeal to you a bit more but um i think hell let loose has got some potential it's it's not an incredibly fun game right now because most of the mechanics just aren't implemented properly yet and it's buggy and all this kind of stuff but I'm excited for it. And although I don't think the destruction features have been implemented yet, they are playing around with wall destruction, fence destruction, and bridge destruction. So uh, I feel like some of these indie shooters, especially the realistic ones like Squad, suffer most from not having destructible environments because it allows a building to become like this impenetrable stronghold that players just literally have to run into and run into machine gun fire to take rather than being able to blow it up with superior firepower or vehicles from the outside. So if they can implement destruction into this game properly, that'll be really exciting. They did say that I don't think they're going to implement it into buildings, but at least with walls and stuff like that, that could add an added level of realism and strategy and tactics to the game. So really excited to follow the progress of this indie shooter. I'll let you guys know of anything cool that changes with the game. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.